Admiral, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure to be back here at Chatham House, uh, and I'm delighted to have alongside me a man who has been one of the Royal Navy's most enduring supporters, and is, as is the way with uh, good friends, one of our toughest maritime partners, Admiral John Greenett. Between us, as you heard the Secretary of State say, we own one of the most fundamental and consistent partnerships that has bound the United Kingdom and the United States together so tightly over the past 75 years. There are few areas where our strategic interests are more natural or our global interests more aligned than at sea. Uh, we heard from the Secretary of State about our recent naval cooperation in the Baltic and in the Gulf, reassuring regional partners whilst ourselves in partnership. And then there's our astonishing and unique nuclear alliance, half a century strong, still the ultimate guardian of both transatlantic and NATO security. But today we're here to talk about the future of our maritime partnership, which is about to become even closer and stronger. In part because of the sustained investment that the Royal Navy is making in equipment and capability, as you heard, but also because of the direct, practical, spiritual support we have both had from the US Navy for our own maritime journey. And yet, when Admiral Greenett became Chief of Naval Operations four years ago, as some of you will recall, the Royal Navy was in a very different place. We had decommissioned the Ark Royal and said goodbye to the Harrier jump jet. Of our two future carriers, the second ship faced the unedifying prospect of mothballing or sail overseas. Meanwhile, the future of our nuclear deterrent was unclear. Of course, the context was very different. The UK was working its way out of the deepest recession since the 1930s, and the armed forces, still daily in contact in Afghanistan, were adjusting to necessary public spending restraint. But as the heavy burden of two enduring land campaigns took their toll, it's not surprising that some openly questioned whether we had the means to sustain our place in the world. Four years later, things are very different. The government is committed to replacing all four existing deterrent submarines on a like-for-like -like basis. Indeed, long lead components are already on order manpower is being prepared, the design is advanced. We now have a clear and welcome commitment that both, both our new carriers will enter service, giving us continuous availability in the future. So the carrier debate has moved well beyond the question of why. Instead, I find myself being asked, can you produce more? Can you produce more capability? And can you produce it more quickly? In addition to their complement of F-35 Joint Strike Fighter Aircraft, the Lightning II, these ships are large enough to simultaneously deploy special forces and drones and provide them with support from the sea and then recover them too. One of the great benefits of having such a large, large, movable, sovereign airfield at your disposal is the sustained capability and the reduced footprint ashore. And it's not difficult to imagine how this flexible strike capability could be brought to bear when ready against terrorism and extremism wherever they are found in the world. So continuous at sea deterrence and continuous carrier capability those two great expressions of sovereign power and strategic intent are now politically double locked in place. Meanwhile, the third of the Royal Navy's three core capabilities, 
that partnership between our Royal Marines and our specialist amphibious shipping has proven again the kind of flexible military options in the way it has offered humanitarian response and support to the migrant crisis in the Mediterranean. And the Chancellor, to cap this, the Chancellor has twice this year committed himself to a national shipbuilding strategy, including the next generation of frigates, with his aim to, quote, build the most modern navy in the world, unquote. What a turnaround from where we were a few years ago. What an opportunity and a responsibility for our two 